Hello, good morning, and welcome to the fourth day of this year's Virtual Youth Climate Summit. My name is Lorna, and I'm a secondary school maths teacher and part of the working group for today's events. Today, we have a whole day of learning about fashion and consumption and getting a feel for how we can make them more sustainable. So we hope that you enjoy. Welcome to the fourth day of this year's Virtual Youth Climate Summit. We hope you've enjoyed it so far, have learned lots and have thought about some meaningful pledges you can take away from this week. My name is Maddie and as you can tell, I'm a Youth Climate Ambassador. As a little warm up this morning, myself and Maddie, a Youth Ambassador, are going to see if we can get you thinking about those systems of fashion and consumption. So here we have a life cycle. Everything has a story. Living things, for example, are born, grow up, grow old, die, decompose, and so it continues. Uh, what we'd like is that on your own or in pairs, uh, we want you to think of life cycles, but specifically for your mobile phone. So we want you to think about specifically how and where they're made for each stage of their life. We'll give you one minute and a half to think about this. Five more seconds. Okay, that is time up. So um, you might have found that harder than you originally thought. We did when we did this. Um, for starters, when we were doing it, we didn't know how a mobile was made. Um, we didn't know what specific materials it used and where those materials would come from. Uh, we didn't know where the components that make the mobile phone were assembled and we definitely didn't know what happened to a mobile phone once we'd finished using it. Um, but what we did manage to kind of get in mind was this, which you might agree is kind of generally the cycle for the production of a mobile phone, the extraction phase, the production, distribution, consumption and disposal. When we put those two cycles together, they're easier to compare. And what do you notice? We're gonna give you two and a half minutes this time to work on your own or in pairs. And we want you to come up with a few ideas, uh, specifically answering these questions. So how do the two cycles compare? What's good and bad about the mobile phone system? What could the yellow arrow mean uh, in the mobile phone cycle and what could be improved about the mobile system. I'm going to give you two and a half minutes, okay? Off you go.
Right. So I hope you've had some ch- had a chance to have some really nice discussions. Perhaps at some point you can share your discussions with the class. But for now, let me draw your attention to a few points. First, you might have noticed that the mobile phone cycle is not so much a cycle as a line. Mobile, fi- mobile phones are not designed so they can be fed back into the start of the system when they're finished with, like the cycle or of an animal or plant is. Here is the first limitation to the system. There is less and less at the start and more and more at the end. And so it won't be able to go on forever. Question is, for how much longer can it go on? And are we happy to pay the ever more expensive cost? So what is good about the system? Well, you might have said it's very good at making phone, mobile phones, which are very useful. It can also make millions of other things that hopefully make our lives be- better. It gives us purpose and a measure of success. Well, to a certain extent, I suppose these could be considered to be true. You might have also mentioned a few bad things though. Like, that the system produces harmful pollution, it exploits the environment and people, it disregards nature, social equality, future generations, non-human species, and the negative impacts it has on our mental health, which are also arguably true. So what's the golden arrow? Well, that's why it's so hard to know how mobile phones are made. The information is kept hidden from us by design. In fact, it's near impossible to know the full system of all the products that we buy. So how can we improve the system? Well, that's the million dollar dollar question. It is not impossible to know the exact best way to do this. And that's one of the reasons it's taking so long to do so. But there are many people from every discipline already working to make positive change in the best way that we know how. One of the leading ways of doing this is to make our system cyclic, like nature. And Broadly speaking, this is what we call recycling. (laughs) Uh, So keeping materials and resources in the loop for longer. And there's plenty of people all over the world who are pushing to make recycling easier and more commonplace. Uh, There's three example organizations here that are trying to do this. One is WeCycle, we have Rayburn Fashion, and the Ellen MacArthur Foundation, which works with the circular economy. So recycling is one of the known ways we can try to change our system of consumption. Can you think of other ways? They all start with R and there are six of them. I'm going to give you five seconds to try and think of these. So we've got recycling and the next one is repurposing. Maybe you got this one. Stella McCartney is doing this, as is Livia Firth with her company Eco Age. The next one is Repair. Gerald Street is doing this. The next one is Reuse. You might have heard of Defop, I certainly have. And of course there's Vinted, which is great. The next one we have is Reduce. New does this and so does Loop Packaging. And finally, Refuse and Communicate. Um, as Extinction Rebellion are are doing. Today, you'll also hear from Fashion Revolution about refusing to buy into unethical fashion and products and what you can do to make your voice heard. Uh, You may not be able to vote politically, um, but you can vote economically. And this is where refusing comes in. And in fact, your generation is one of the most powerful consumer forces on the market today. So let companies know why you are or why you're not buying their products. Send an email to head office, for example. If if they don't know why you're not buying their product, then they won't know how to change it.
and refusing to buy, refusing to vote for a product is really, really powerful. However, it is not just people who are in companies who work to influence change. Can you think of any famous people who are doing this? See if you can recognise any of these people all working on top of their day job to try and influence change. So first of all, we have Emma Watson. I'm sure many of you know her. Leonardo DiCaprio. It's Jane Goodall. Will Smith, Greta Thunberg, Jack Johnson, Olivia Wilde, Edward Wharton, David Attenborough, Jamie Oliver, Vandana Shiva, we've got Brad Pitt, Kate Blanchett, Michelle Obama, Jaden Smith, Selena Gomez, Lil Dicky, Stormzy. Okay, a little bit of a quiz. Who do you think said these quotes? First one. As consumers, we have so much power to change the world by just being careful in what we buy. Was it A, Kira Knightley, B, Emma Watson, C, Kate Blanchett? It was Emma Watson. Um, okay, so she launched People Tree Youth Fashion in 2010, and she recently worked with Livia Firth to spread the message about sustainable fashion. Question two. It is not a question of saying no to production. It is about changing those structures so they're not exploitative. A, Cara Delevingne, B, Adwara Abbo, or C, Lily Cole. The answer is C. Supermodel, supermodel and eco-warrior Lily Cole has been a green ambassador for many cam campaigns and helped save one billion trees in Brazil. Lily also co-founded an ethical knitwear label called the North Circular. The Hawaiian Islands are almost like a filter for plastic. It's not like where you just throw the bottle in the trash and never have to think about it again. Here, if you just go to the east side of the island, you'll know exactly where it goes. Was that A, Barack Obama, B, Jason Momoa, or C, Jack Johnson? It was C, Jack Johnson. So Jack Johnson and his wife started an environmental education foundation in Hawaii called the Kokoa Hawaii Foundation, uh, which helps education in environmental education in schools and communities. Last one. What I'm always trying to say to the consumer is, buy less, choose well, make it last. A, Vivian Westwood, B, Orsola de Castro, or C, Stella McCartney. The answer is A, Vivian Westwood is well known for her sustainable fashion work. In fact, she recently shaved off her famous red locks to raise awareness for climate change. I hope you got a lot of them right. So today we will not only be hearing from the inspirational people working to forward the visions of these organisations that you can see now, but also from a number of others as well. They will tell us about the work that they are doing towards their pledges to make positive change in our system of consumption and hopefully offer inspiration to how we could work towards ours too. If you'd like, feel free to have a think about what pledges you could make today. Thank you so much for your time and your participation. We really wish you a really fun, educational and inspiring day. Thank you very much.